with the story, we we meet basically at the beginning. You meet a man and a woman who are um, who are in love. They have a child who's three years old. We quickly learn that they're um, both FBI agents. She's covering serial crime. She kind of follows a soft lead on a serial killer, and she disappears. Um, um, we fast forward six years later, and uh, my character has remarried, and my son's now nine years old. And 4 a.m. one morning, I get a phone call from uh, someone, as I usually do. I wake up thinking it's going to be work, and it ends up being um, uh, this. I've left out a major plot point, which is they realized that she had been killed through circumstantial evidence and put, uh, six years ago, put this gentleman away um, into jail. Um, and convicted him circumstantially. And uh, at this 4 a.m. phone call that I get six years later is him on the phone telling me um, she's still alive, you have one hour. Yeah, I mean, I just remember thinking on set anyway while we're playing scenes is when we're all three in the same room, you, you, you're constantly, as a character, saying, I want to show this person that I love them and that they're who I'm with as your current wife while simultaneously trying to be sensitive to the needs and the potential trauma that is currently being experienced by your ex-wife slash still wife. Um, and that was certainly complicated waters to navigate. And, you know, if you're, if you're playing somebody who is somewhat sympathetic, then maybe they go all out and they have full conversations with these human beings to try to explain to them their feelings, but I wasn't. I was playing somebody who is an introvert um, who uh, is not a professional at handling his emotions. He's not a psycho psychologist and uh, certainly not prepared to even try to deal with it on an intellectual level. So that was a difficult thing for me to, 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 balance, uh, to, to try to grapple with as an actor because on my end, if I were in the same situation, maybe I would try to visit more, participate more in the therapy sessions with Emily. I would, you know what I mean? But that's not what this human being chose to do. That's not what the writers gave me. So, um, you know, you, part of the job of an actor is to try to understand through the, the events that the writers have given you, how a human being might uh, be reasonably uh, or unreasonably uh, behaving. We had a lot of fun as a cast, like we all liked each other. The problem though was that I was playing such an intense human being that I kind of lived, I didn't go full method for it, but I kind of lived in that world for three months. I mean, the way I describe it to people is that I kept this, this man sort of at arm's length when I went home, but he was always around me. And, you know, the, this character would, you know, be in my thoughts before I would go to sleep. And when I was working out in the morning every single day, and I was, I was on complete lockdown. I was on a meal plan. I'm working out every morning. I go home at night. You know, my schedule was wake up, you know, eating the meal plan all day long, work out in the morning. Then I would get picked up. Um, I had a wonderful assistant named uh, Karina from Bulgaria where we shot. And we would go to set and we would review what we did the night before and then we would shoot all day and I would come home and I would review um, the work for the following day. Then when we had a day off, which was usually one a week, I would then spend the entire day prepping for the following week of work, which I had already done a ton of work on before we started shooting. So I'm kind of trying to remember through notes and uh, uh, thoughts that I had, the work I had done maybe a month and a half ago. I mean, it was that, that, so that was kind of intense. but. I definitely remember, I mean, there's moments on this set. What's great for me, this is my first full television show, right? This is the first time that I've had the opportunity to have a narrative like this where I get to explore a character and try to participate in a, um, a greater narrative and see where I can give my efforts to help tell the story best. And um, so there was a lot for me to, to learn. I mean, I really, there was so much coming at me in the way of endurance. Uh, there was so much coming at me in the way of uh, handling stress, honestly. I mean, I remember there was one really tough day. I mean, one of my favorite things, one of my favorite scenes that I shot with Stana was, was a very difficult day for me on set because I was grappling with um, 
you know, personal artistic struggles that have nothing to do with anything on set, but those are going to come up, right? This is how you grow. It's how you move and uh, forward. And I was having struggles with like on that particular day, you know, there's some days where you're a wide open vessel and you're being a great actor for everybody. And there's some days where, you know, I'm not being, uh, trusting or I'm not being and, and feeling that you can express yourself in a room of safety, which um, on this particular day that I'm thinking of, we were shooting a uh, scene from, uh, I think it was episode three or four where, um, where I get on the phone and I'm standing with her and somebody tells me she's got to be the one that did it. And I kind of confront her, I find out that she left this hotel room and I confront her about it. And it was a really intense scene. It was a really intense day. And, uh, and it was one of my prouder moments, I think, on screen. I was very satisfied with how the scene turned out. Um, but on set that day, it was also a great learning experience for me and a great opportunity for, uh, for you know, it was a great opportunity for me to receive uh, the, the kind of trust and grace that Stana was giving me through my stressful um, period. And it was it was nice. I mean, those are the kinds of things you you prize when you look back on a project like this. You want to be in an atmosphere where um, artists feel safe, and where all artists feel that they can express themselves uh, to their greatest capacity. Well, I, I've I've been hunting now. You know, this is uh, I find myself in a very new position in my life where uh, which I, I never had before. Which is I've been spending all my life killing myself. I mean, really, really hustling every single second just to try to be working. And I'm now for the first time in my life in a position where I'm reading scripts and I'm trying to find something beautiful that I'm attracted to. And, uh, and, uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm taking my time. I've been traveling a lot cause I've never traveled in my life really until this year. Um, and so I've been trying, you know, as silly as it's going to sound, but I've been trying to do a lot of self exploration because I, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm 36 years old. And so for approximately 14 years, I was going full blast, just trying to make ends meet. And I've been offered, I've been proffered the opportunity to see Japan and see Spain. And I just went to Iceland and I'm, and I'm, I'm trying to take advantage of it while I have the time. So that's really where my energy is, is in right now. And, uh, and I, I think I'm actually going to be going back to Japan in March just because there's more to see and more, more I want to fall in love with. But, you know, hopefully something comes along soon that I'm madly in love with. Um, and, but I haven't, haven't seen it yet. I haven't seen it yet. It's new for me, too, because, like, I can't audition for TV anymore. It's just, like, weird thing. I didn't even know this was a thing. Like, you... Wait, you get a TV show, and now that you're on a TV show, you're not allowed to do any more TV, and that was primarily what I had been doing prior. So, 